Hello everybody, this is Warrior Dan, and what you've been looking at is a small, fairly innocuous indie game that popped up in Steam recently by the name of The Padre. You play the role of a demon-hunting priest who receives a strange letter in the mail, following which he goes off to go investigate the disappearance of the fictional Pope Benedictus. I'm sure that's no possible connection to our real-life Pope of a similar name, but I'll let it slide. Things get a bit more complicated when his antique Ford Model T breaks down outside a spooky mansion that even Eddie Murphy would be smart enough not to go into. Instead of doing the sensible thing and driving away, you break into the mansion seemingly to loot the place, because there's really no apparent reason you'd be going in there. That is, at least until you notice some spooky stuff starts happening around you, such as you getting slapped around by some haunted cloves, before being attacked by otherworldly zombies, witnessing ghosts, and encountering a very suspicious suit of armor. Now, like the ghosts in the game, I'm going to be entirely transparent. I am an active member of the game's community, and I've had the pleasure to speak with the developer directly at length in the past, and I'm very aware of the game's development. While I'm not going to point out every feature the game has, as I've already produced a video on the Padre several months ago when it was attempting to raise funds on Kickstarter, I do want to point out a few minor improvements that I noticed while playing the updated Steam version of the game. The Padre himself has a slew of newly added voice lines, which is nice for a game that is so heavily reliant on the likability factor of its main character. New additional voice lines to give him some additional depth is always nice. Also, when you die now, in the game, you are sent to this purgatory-like dimension, where you will enter a portal in order to return to the land of the living, a nice if simplistic take on the spiritual angle of the game. I like games that redefine the typical game over screen. Games like Dark Souls did this very well, and while I know the cliché of comparing other games to Dark Souls, I think the comparison is pretty apt here. The biggest problem with the game is, in its early access state right now, is that you are constantly feeling underprepared and disadvantaged in any situation, whether it be a fight encounter, or puzzle you need to solve in order to advance. The implementation of puzzles leaves much to be desired. The control layout likewise can feel at times sluggish and unresponsive. During combat, hit registration seems to be a 50-50 gamble, with melee attacks being so slow to land, it feels like I'm looking at one of those X-Men Quicksilver scenes. Storytelling in this game comes partially in the form of finding letters and nodes scattered around the map. The problem here is that the notes are incredibly sore and lacking in substance, wasting an opportunity to develop a rich and meaningful story for story-driven players to enjoy. As the Padre is a linear game with, with not much content outside of the fairly lean story that drives it, there isn't a lot of incentive for player replayability. So now that I've roasted this game more than YouTubers roasted Logan Paul, it's time to address the elephant in the room. What would be my solutions to these perceived problems? Let's start by addressing the easter eggs. A lot of games feature easter eggs. It's a trick that has been part of the game industry since its conception. Whether it's the Aperture Science Laboratory appearing in the Stanley Parable, the Flaming Sword from Dark Souls appearing in Overwatch, or the TARDIS from Doctor Who is secretly being added to Assassin's Creed Origins, it's a fairly common technique among game developers, and one generally added out of deep respect for the source material. However, the difference between these games and the Padre lies not with the existence of these easter eggs, but rather their implementation. In Overwatch, for example, you have to go through a specific corridor, bringing you inconveniently away from the objective, and then you have to follow that corridor to the room it leads to, and then you have to look in a specific corner of the room to see the easter egg in question. While not difficult to find, it is still located far enough away from any other points of interest that most players would likely ignore the corridor and the room altogether, keeping it secret fairly safe. In the Padre, instead of hiding those easter eggs out of sight for the more hardcore players to find on their own, these homages and easter eggs become one of the primary aspects of the game, derailing the already limited plot and overriding gameplay elements, becoming a distraction to the game. The Padre stumbles over itself to introduce as many pop culture references as possible, but in doing so it suits itself in the foot creatively, limiting its own ability to tell a new and unique story. We know nothing of our character or why we should be interested in him. The plot can be incoherent at times. For example, we're given no reason why our Padre character is compelled to save the Pope, who he clearly has no adoration or even respect for, indicated to us at the start of the game. The collectible letters don't offer any meaningful information, and they contain less characters than a Twitter tweet. As someone who's followed the development of the game since almost its initial conception, I entirely support the team behind the Padre and want the best for this game, but in order for the game to become really noteworthy, it has to start offering players more than just semi-functional combat controls and a unexplained puzzle system. If at least a handful of the criticisms I made above are addressed at some point down the line, I would be happy. I do think this game needs to become something more than it is. It needs to take on an entirely new direction 
books and then place its emphasis on creating new content of its own, not just relying on the nostalgia factor of cheap one-liners and awkwardly placed easter eggs. What do you think of the Padre? Would you buy it? Yes or no? The Padre is currently set at a retail price of $14.99. For those who want to invest in a indie early access game that does have a solid foundation, but is still actively in need of additional refinement, I do recommend voting with your dollar and supporting the developers if at all possible. The only way we as a gaming community can expect indie games like this to improve is if we reward developers like this who communicate with the player base and actively work to establish a two-way reciprocal connection. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you can get notified as soon as a new video from me goes live. This is Warrior Dan signing out, stay awesome everybody, and peace out.